Hi everyone, I'm pleased to know that you are following us on this service online. Welcome to this Sunday, next before Lent. Our service today is songs of praise. We also pray for social justice in the church. We pray also against racism in church according to Church of England to encourage social inclusion and diversity. And the gospel today is taken from Mark chapter 9, verses 2 to 9. And Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John to pray. When they came back from the mountain, Jesus told them not to tell anybody to keep it secret. We call God Father. God is holy and inviting us to be holy like him. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate this Sunday service against racism in the church, let us call to mind our sins. We have not always worshipped God, our Creator. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have not always followed Christ, our Savior. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have not always trusted in the Spirit, our guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, who sent His Son into the world to save sinners, bring you His pardon and grace now and forever. Amen. Let us say the collect. Almighty Father, whose Son was revealed in majesty before He suffered death upon the cross, give us grace to perceive His glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with Him and be changed into the likeness for glory to glory. With a life in the reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark, verses 2 to 9. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. 
and he was transfigured before them. And his cloth became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be there, to stay here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud here a voice came, This is my Son, the Beloved, listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brother and sister in Jesus Christ, the peace of the Lord be with you in this Sunday before Lent. Like I say from the beginning, the gospel is taken from Mark chapter 9, verses 2 to 9. Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John to pray together in the mountain. Well, they saw a miracle the first time Jesus changed completely. They were so happy. But when you read the verse 6 and verse 7, the verse 6 said, they were terrified what they have seen there. The verse 7 say, the Lord called Jesus and told the disciple, listen to my beloved son, listen to him. My sermon this morning will be focused on those two verses, 6 and 7. Verses 6 said, the disciples were terrified. Let us do a short application in our own lives. We are also terrified as human beings, like the disciples, for what they have seen. They were not prepared. That's what they were terrified. We are also terrified as human beings what is going on around us. People are sick. We are in the lockdown. We lost friends. We lost some family members. We lost our neighbors. Some people lost jobs. 
incomes. In our own life, we are terrified. We don't know what to do and how to help. Sometimes we don't have the answers, like the disciples. But they, was, they were trusting Jesus Christ because he was with them. As human beings, we are also terrified what is going on in the world. People dying, the number of people dying is rising all the time. People suffering, poverty, injustice. We are terrified. We don't have the answer. Sometimes we say, what can we do? No answer. We are also terrified what, what is going on in the churches. And we, today, like I said, it's a Sunday against racism in church. Around us, we see many churches are closed. The number of people coming to church declining and going down. Some churches financially, they can't cope. We are terrified. We don't know the future of the church. Some people leaving also the church, they say they don't want to come back <laughs> because for several reasons. We are terrified as a Christian. But we don't know what to do. Sometimes we ask the question, what can we do to save our church? We don't have the answer. But today, when you read verse 7, Jesus gave the answer. A voice came from heaven and told the disciple, This is my son. Listen to him. It's so the same message to us today. Sometimes we don't have answer. But the Lord telling us to listen to Jesus when we are terrified. The Lord will guide us with the Holy Spirit to find the right way to deal with our issues. The church declining, some people leaving the church, sometimes we say, what will happen? We don't know the future of the church. But the Lord, through the Holy Spirit, telling us God has the answer. Sometimes we pray less. But Sunday today is telling us, let us pray with all issues we are facing. The Lord will answer. He knows what time, when he will answer. What he will answer. We put everything to God and we will have the answer. We are complaining. God will give us the answer. To be faithful, to, be, to have the courage to stand again and to go where you are. Come back, please. Stand up. Be alive. Believe in Jesus. You trust every day. Jesus will be with you. Your church will be alive again. Because it's not your church. It's not mine. It's Jesus' church. The church will never close. It's Jesus' church. Be faithful. Where you are, praise the Lord. Because it's a song of praise. Ask God to bring your church alive again. In the name of Jesus, who is alive now and forever. Amen. We pray that we may allow our hearts to be touched this length by the cry of our sisters and brothers living in poverty, who are not well, who are alone. Loving Father, we hear your call to all who thirst for a brighter future. Come to the water. Pour out your spirit upon us and lead us to walk alongside one another. Lord, in your mercy. Lord our Shepherd, let a desire for change well up within us. May we overflow with compassion and love. May we reshape our world together to reflect your kingdom of hope for all. Lord, in your mercy. 
God of heaven, heal our heart of all that prevent us responding to our sisters and brothers excluded by poverty and prevented from living a full life. This land may we implore justice through our prayer. Stand in solidarity through our fasting and reach our brother and sister in need. Lord, in your mercy. To the creator of our races and peoples, who loves each of us for our uniqueness, we offer our prayers and petition for an end to discrimination in all its forms, that each person may be a respected and valued child of God, that the church may be a witness and a universal sign of unity among all peoples. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, our Redeemer, we pray for those who are not well in our church family, especially for Vera Hartfield, who is sick in hospital, and Marjorie Redfem, who has also been in hospital. We pray also for Beryl Brown, who still awaits surgery on her knee. Finally, our prayer to Margaret Pearson. The funeral will take place on Friday, Lord. We ask you to receive her in your kingdom and to bless her family in these difficult circumstances. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all of us in the congregation. May the peace of our Lord Jesus be with us. To be like Peter, James, and John. Lord, in your mercy. We say the final collect. Let us pray. Holy God, our Father, we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. May we who are partaker at his scriptures reflect his life in the word and deed, that all the world may know his power to change and save. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hi, everyone. Before the final blessing, we have two important notices. Next Wednesday, the 17th of February, we start our Lent with Ash Wednesday. The church, St. Lawrence, will be open from half past 10 to half past 11 for the service. Those who want to come for 
Ash Wednesday for ashing are welcome. In the evening at 5 o'clock, we will open St. Anne for the service. You are all welcome to start Lent with prayer. We have also Lent Coast Mission Partnership. It will be on Zoom every Wednesday, 7 o'clock in the evening for the next six weeks. You will receive the invitation and the link for those who want to follow us and be together. We have also on Friday the 19th in church at St. Lawrence at half past one, the funeral of Margaret Pearson in church. But we can't accommodate everybody in church. Only 30 people, 30 people are allowed to attend the service. You can pray for her and the family where you are. Thank you very much. May the Lord keep you safe when you enjoy our service where you are and bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Have a great Sunday. God bless. Thank you.